Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I am here today at the Cody Firearms Museum, part of the Buffalo Bill Center of the West up in Cody, Wyoming. I'm taking a look at some of the guns in their extensive and very cool collection, including this experimental Thompson submachine gun. Now this looks very much like a standard 1928 model Thompson, except for the magazine. The magazine's like too long. Well, the reason for that is this gun was built in 30 carbine. In 1939, the Winchester Company, uh, a great many of whose guns are here in the Cody Museum, uh, the Winchester Company developed the 30 carbine cartridge for the US government. They were looking for an intermediate power uh, carbine, something that would be better than a 1911 pistol that they could issue to kind of support troops, um, truck drivers, couriers, artillerymen, other guys who didn't need a full-size M1 Garand rifle, but they did need something better than a 1911 for personal defense. Uh, a whole bunch of different companies submitted design proposals in 1940, and the Ordnance Department did a whole bunch of testing of them. Uh, one, of the, the, one of the requirements was the guns had to be chambered for this new 30 caliber carbine cartridge. One of the others was that the guns had to weigh five pounds or less. Now, the Thompson uh, gun was the standard US submachine gun at the time, manufactured by Auto Ordnance. Auto Ordnance was concerned that it would lose a lot of its submachine gun business if this 30 caliber carbine uh, was adopted and wasn't an auto ordnance product uh, because this would legitimately replace a lot of submachine guns in combat service. So auto ordnance actually sub, uh, submitted a design for a light rifle which is totally different than the Thompson submachine gun and we've actually we'll talk about one of those in another video when I have the chance to uh, get my hands on one. However, kind of as a backup plan, and maybe just as a proof of concept, they also submitted a Thompson submachine gun, this one, in fact, in 30 carbine. Uh, the barrel, obviously, is different. The magazine is obviously different. The bolt, of course, is different to fit the cartridge. And the receiver is slightly different to fit the longer magazine well. However, all of the other parts are totally standard Thompson parts. The sight, the stock, the grip frame, the firing assembly, the magazine release, all of that stuff was standard Thompson submachine gun. Uh, material. The idea here was to show that this gun could be manufactured with a minimum of retooling. Now the problem was this thing weighs like 10 or 12 pounds unloaded, which is, you know, double or a little more than double of what the US military requirement was for the gun. So this one was submitted to the, uh, the Ordnance Department and they basically took a look at it and went, that's nice, it's more than twice as heavy as we want, thanks, no thanks. And that was the end of the testing. Uh, as far as I'm aware, these weren't even fired in military testing. Um, obviously, this didn't meet the requirements of what the government was looking for. But hey, it was probably not that difficult for Thompson to make it, so why not submit one as just in case sort of thing. So um, let's take a closer look at a couple of the bits. We'll check out the magazine. I believe it's a 15 round magazine. Uh, the requirements for magazine capacity changed over the course of the testing. but. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at it up close. So the receiver here, of course, has to be made longer in order to fit the longer magazine for the longer cartridge. And so our markings on here are, are hand stamped. Uh, Thompson submachine gun. What's kind of interesting is that the caliber is not marked 30 carbine because that wasn't the official designation in 1941 when this gun was actually made. Uh, it's marked caliber 30 short rifle M1 self-loading cartridge, uh, which was I guess kind of the working definition of the cartridge at the time. Now, the selector markings are the same as a standard Thompson. Serial number up here is one. No way you're going to mistake that. And then on the opposite side, we have the standard uh, machine done roll mark for the Auto Ordnance Corporation because they were able to copy that. That's the same marking as they'd have on any standard Thompson gun, as well as the various patent numbers. The rear sight on this experimental gun is a standard 1928 model uh, Lyman rear sight, like Thompson was using on all the regular pieces. Now, of course, it's the magazine that is really interesting and different here. As I mentioned, the magazine catch is exactly the same. It's this somewhat awkward Thompson system where you push up on this lever and it releases this catch inward. Unfortunately, I don't have any 30 caliber dummy cartridges to uh, load in this to demonstrate, but I think you get the idea. This was a double stack magazine. Um, right, not entirely sure on the magazine capacity here. Um, this may have been 15, this may also have been a 20 or 30 round or maybe even 25 round. 
Uh, a lot of the guns that were submitted to the M1 carbine trials program had a wide variety of magazine capacities, uh, of magazines submitted with them, everything from five up to 50 rounds. So uh, the carbine cartridge is a pretty narrow one, so this is a narrower magazine than you would typically expect to see. Uh, definitely double stack. And then, of course, it's got uh, the, the big hole in the back here, which is the locking tab for the, the Thompson system. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. I always, of course, enjoy getting to take a look at some prototype guns like this, even the ones that were dismal failures for what they were intended to be used for. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, please consider checking out my Patreon account. Uh, that's what helps me travel to cool places like the Cody Museum to take a look at guns like this and bring them to you. And, of course, if you should ever find yourself in the vicinity of Cody, Wyoming, you should absolutely stop and check out the Buffalo Bill Center of the West and the Cody Firearms Museum in particular. Their collection really is quite extraordinary and well displayed on top of that. So, thanks for watching.